Well, Mike, just a blockbuster day in New Hampshire politics. And John DeStaso, let's start with the headline here. You don't often see a high-profile potential A-list candidate like Chris Sununu walking away from this kind of race. What did he say today that really stuck with you about why he's not running for Senate? For Adam, for me, it was the, the stylistic difference and the demands of the job being so different, uh, being governor, hands-on manager uh, versus being a, a legislator. Uh, while many of us thought that Chris Sununu was going to run for the Senate, and some of us were, you know, not quite on the, on the mark there, uh, his, his logic made total sense that it just wasn't, uh, it wasn't in the cards for him. It just wasn't, didn't fit his, his personality. So uh, in the end, it really was not a shocker. So Scott Brown says he's out. Former Senator Kelly Ayotte says she's out. With Sununu, those are three of the biggest potential Republican names off the board. So who is stepping forward tonight? Adam, uh, there haven't, hasn't been anyone announcing to this point. There hasn't been an announcement. There are many people, several people out there uh, making calls, fielding calls. Some of the folks that uh, we know are considering this at this point uh, include uh, State Senate President Chuck Morris, Commissioner of Education uh, Frank Edelblue. I just now heard from 2020 uh, U.S. Senate nominee Corky Mesner, who's thinking of making a, a comeback, feeling that in this environment and in, in the current environment is more favorable to Republicans. Uh, I've also heard from sources close to former Congressman Frank Ginter that he is actually making calls about this. And uh, finally, there's the gentleman who ran in 2010, uh, a very well-heeled businessman by the name of Bill Binney, who some of us who have been around a while uh, certainly remember. To others, he might be a new name. So there may be people out there that we don't know about yet and that may be in the, in the business world more than the political world who uh, will be beginning to emerge. But I think it's going to happen rather quickly. I think we're going to have uh, several busy days here uh, trying to weed this all out. Right. It could be a very much kind of a Wild West situation here over the next few days as Republicans come forward. And of course, uh, General Don Bolduc, another 2020 candidate, is a declared candidate in this race for U.S. Senate as a Republican. Obviously, right now, the Hassan campaign has to be pretty happy with this outcome. This is still going to be a hard fought race, but it's not going to be the same thing as a Sununu Hassan matchup. But what are the implications for this decision for the Democrats who thought there might be an open governor seat here? Right now. Now the question for the Democrats uh, is who is going to run against Chris Sununu as he moves to a fourth term. And then there's the continuing question about uh, the first congressional district, uh, which right now is being uh, redistricted or is on the verge of being redistricted to a heavily Republican district. So uh, right now uh, the names on the Democratic side are, for governor, are Congressman Pappas, Chris Pappas, who hasn't really said that he would run but for governor, but hasn't ruled that out. And we've been hearing a lot from uh, the lone Democratic executive counselor, Cindy Warmington of Concord, uh, who has been sending out uh, emails, trying to inspire supporters. She hasn't said that she's running for governor yet, but uh, the signals are there. Let's just put it that way. Lots to watch on that front. And also today, Governor Sununu saying he wanted to continue to raise his national profile. So that's something to keep an eye on in the years ahead. For John DeStay, so I'm Adam Sexton. Mike and Monica, let's go back to you.